very common questions. So for that, I just already prepared this documentation like how we can explain the projects in the interview. OK, so definitely there might be a different different cases when we work for the project. Like in the project, we might uh, have. Did I started recording? Yes. So in that case, uh, in project, basically every project, there might be a uh, environment like you know front end and back end. OK. So front end is basically your UI, uh, your website applications. OK, and back end is back end is similar to like your database servers or API servers. OK, where the actual data is storing your records. From the user uploading their files uh, from the UI and that that will store inside the backend system. OK, there might be it might be your S3 bucket data or your database. OK, or your any other database like DynamoDB or something. OK, then uh, in the project or you, you can just explain like we are using the Jira ticket. These, these are the common tools Jira ticket. OK, from the Atlassian Jira Jira and Confluence. OK. Confluence for the documentation like uh, MS Word. So, OK, these are the third party tool. And Jira, Jira for the ticketing system where you can create the ticket and you can uh, track the, your work progress there, progress there. Okay. For internal chatting or uh, calls or daily sync up calls, we use uh, Slack channel, uh, Slack or Microsoft Teams. Sometimes people use Skype for business or any other uh, third party tools. Okay. For the internal communication. Where you can perform your daily uh, sync up calls, your stand up calls, or your sprint planning calls or something. Okay. So, sprint planning call or daily uh, sprint planning call is basically like your uh, every sprint uh, might have a two weeks. Okay. So, in that two weeks, what you you will going to work in which in which Jira ticket you you want to work, or you you are uh, you need to work on that. So in that case, we discuss in that sprint planning our backlog refinement or something. OK, so which uh, task we need to pick up uh, for next uh, two weeks to work on that. OK, and you can track the progress by moving the Jira ticket like uh, in the Jira ticket. There is a workflow like you know when you create the new ticket, it will be uh, ready for dev. Then you you need to move to in progress once you started working on that requirement. OK, and once you are done with that uh, uh, work, then you can move to this code review. OK. And then finally you can move it to the release or done status. OK, that is a part of the Jira ticket system. Then for to store the credentials, as I said, you can use last password one password in the project. OK, and uh, to storing the applications code, which is we normally called as a gate. OK, repository hosting. Sometimes people use GitHub or sometimes people use you are a bit bucket or GitLab or something. OK. OK, uh, so. Yeah, so, uh, I wanted to chip this on. I don't know. Uh, I have a certification on uh, Scrum and certification on safe. Should I add it to my resume? Uh, which certificate? Scrum, Scrum Master. Scrum Master, yes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You can add that. Okay, because uh, in terms of the project handling, that will be a impact, give the better impact. Oh, OK. I just when I saw what you're doing here now on this Confluence and Jira, so reflect me back that I have that certification on safe and, uh, safe and Scrum Master. OK, yeah, you can you, you can add. All right, thank you. So to store the application code, which is the repository, uh, we normally call it as a Git. OK, we can use sometimes. Um, it's project to project, but for this sample project, I'm just giving this example. You can explain like about the GitHub or GitLab something. OK, or uh, sometimes company use Bitbucket. It's similar to function wise. Both they are same, but it's a depend on the project to project and their standards. But GitHub or GitLab is a very common tool. The most of the company use this for the repository hosting. Because we are not sharing 
our application data or code to manually via the email address or something. OK, so we use as a centralized best practice. We use in the DevOps methodology. We use GitHub. It's a best practice. OK. GitHub or GitLab. If I show here GitLab. This one, OK. And this is the GitHub. GitHub I just shown here. Like this. We can create the repository like this here. And you can store the data like this, OK? Then in the front end, you can explain like the project when you explain the project like, you know, in the front end, we have a tech stack like ACS Fargate service, which is for the container, OK? Or if you have in a Kubernetes service, you can explain Kubernetes as well, OK? For the DNS mapping to map the domain name, where uh, we can use for the application. We can use the uh, route 53 as a DNS service. Then uh, for the ACS container, we are using as a load balancer there. OK, if you are uh, if you are aware about the auto scaling group, you can explain that as well with the ACS container. OK, but at least overview, you can just give like this, like ACS container route 53 load balancer for to distribute the load. Then your SSL certificate. When we talk about this AWS, uh, it has a two options. Either if you purchase third party uh, SSL certificate, why we use SSL certificate to encrypt the data for the security manner uh, or to maintain the applications with a secure way, OK? To route the traffic encryption method. So we use uh, SSL certificate for that. Uh, in AWS, as I said, AWS certificate manager is a service. Let me show you here. If you search ACM Amazon certificate AWS certificate manager. If you have if you purchase third party certificate. So you can import here as well and you can use for any other services like your EC2 or load balancer or any cloud front. OK, and uh, if you don't have a third party SSL certificate, you can use this service. Certificate manager and you can just simply request. SSL certificate you can see I have used multiple certificate for my different domains. You can see here, OK, and it's a free of cost per domain. You will not get any additional charge for this, OK. But the condition is or limitation is like these AWS managed certificate you can only use within a AWS environment not uh, the outside the AWS environment like your on premises. You can use uh, for the cloud front your RDS, your load balancer or your normal uh, other other relevant services only, but within a AWS. Then uh, to uh, hosting the uh, container images, OK, Docker images. You can explain for the ECR registry, OK? ECR registry is similar to your Docker Hub or any other uh, Google registry, OK? So where you can uh, store your images before uh, deploying the container. And from there you can deploy the container through the pipeline, OK? Then definitely each AWS account has custom VPC. OK, for the best security practice, we uh, we will not use default generated VPC. When you log into your AWS accounts and just search VPC. If you click on this VPC, you, 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 you might see in this default uh, VPC, which is generated by the AWS. You can find this default VPC in every account and each region. This one default VPC 172.31.00 slash 16. OK, these are this is the default VPC. But as a security practice, we uh, AWS also not recommended to use this as a personal practice. You can use but as a normal real time industry, we not use this default VPC. 
because of the limitation and security compliance. Uh, when we design the custom VPC architecture, okay, we can design the public and private subnet, then a route tables, internet gateway, and defining the route tables for public and private subnets separately, okay, for the better infrastructure. Because when we want to create the RDS database, that database should be in the private subnet for the security uh, point of view, okay. You might get uh, these questions uh, when you explain about the three tier ar architecture diagram. OK, so our database should be always in the private subnet, not in the public subnet. The reason why it should be in the private subnet because of the security. So our database should not be exposed to any public network. OK, it should be in the within a private. So that is the reason we use always within a VPC network and uh, private. OK, same setup uh, for the backend uh, infrastructure. When we talk about the backend, we can talk about the Lambda function or sometimes you can use API gateway or any other ECS based servers depend on Java based servers application or something or you are definitely you should have a MySQL database there. OK. For the backend to store the records. And S3 bucket, we can also explain about in the backend. We use S3 bucket to store the application files where users are uploading by using UI, okay, from the front end. Let's say we have application on this container and they where a user can upload their images, photo, or something. So that images we cannot directly store inside the container or somewhere. So we, as a best practice, we can store that to S3 bucket for the storage cost optimization part and the scalability. So in backend, we can explain like this architecture and definitely for the DNS entry map mapping, we can use route 53 in a AWS service. OK, if you are using any different uh, things like GoDaddy domain or something, you can explain like that. But as uh, we are going to explain about the AWS services, we can better to explain about the route 53 Okay, as a DNS service. Then these are the same thing like custom VPC and SSL, SSL certificate. So these are the tech stack about the front end and back end when you explain about the project. Then uh, you can also explain about the how you trigger the alerts, you know, because once we stabilize our infrastructure, we need to keep the eye on the infrastructure. Is the matrix utilization properly working or not? Like any spikes in the utilization of the CPU or memory or any network spikes, something is infrastructure healthy or not? OK, so in that case, we need to trigger the alerts. So in real time, how we can set up the alert triggers? We can sometimes people use pager duty. OK, anyone aware about this pager duty? Or heard about this? No, sir. I can't see it. Where is that? OK, this is the monitoring. The page, oh, this is the page it. duty, third part. Uh, sorry. No, I haven't. No, OK, so page duty is also, you know, uh, you can just set up the alerts on your mobile phone or something. So you will get the if any alert triggers, you will get directly on your mobile phone. Or sometimes people work uh, on call basis after the business hours for the support. So they use pager duty for to receiving the calls or alerts on the mobile. So in the UI, they have this feature available so we can configure that. That settings and other cases like AWS, you uh, how we can trigger the alerts? We can use AWS SNS service. It's a simple notification service. We can add the email subscription into that. With the SNS topics and that alerts once any CPU utilization spikes happens or any memory utilization spikes happen or any other timeouts or something happens. Basically, when alert triggers, it will we can integrate that those alerts to our either our Microsoft Teams or Slack channel. So other option is like we can configure the individual email address, but that is not a feasible options. Let's say in our project we have a 10 or 20 members. OK, and out of that uh, 10 members required to receive the alerts. So better best option is to 
use Slack channel group. We can integrate alerts. So once alert triggered, it will automatically pop up into that Slack channel group. So automatically everyone will aware about that. Like we are getting the alerts from the AWS. So based on the alerts, what type of alerts we can just quickly check and we can take action accordingly to checking the logs or any CloudWatch logs or server logs something and we can take action according to the alert status. OK, it's depend on the alert to alert. What what kind of alerts are there? OK. If uh, if uh, there is a CPU spikes, so definitely we can check the process logs. What uh, what which process consuming the more uh, CPU utilization like that? OK, and if there are any errors, we can just check in the log files. If it's a uh, Nginx or Apache web servers, we can check the logs in the var log Nginx or Apache something. OK. Uh, any questions till now? Uh, on this lamb, lamb, uh, Lambda function, uh, is it that every company uses Node.js or depends on the company requirements? Uh, it's depend on the requirement. I am just, for the example, I am just adding the Node.js here. But uh, if company they want to use Python or any other stuff, so they can use that as well. Okay. On this uh, Slack channels, this Slack channel that you have here, uh, is it is it uh, specific people uh, that we're going to add on this Slack channel that will be getting the alert or depends on the uh, I don't know like this uh, depends on who yeah you're this going is to again uh, depend on depends on the company company standards. Sometimes company use uh, Skype for business. Sometimes company use Microsoft Teams only. Sometimes company use different tools. So I am just for just explaining this project. I am just added here a Slack channel. So if you are using Microsoft Teams, you can also add that as well. Okay. So instead of getting the alerts in individual uh, team member email address, so we can as a best practice we can use centralized channel name. Basically, we can integrate that with the CloudWatch. So whatever the things happen as a alerts, we can that alerts directly jump into that centralized group where it is. It might be a, a teams group or your Slack channel group. So everyone can aware about the alerts whenever they receive. Oh, but you mentioned something about phone. Like you receive the alert on your phone. Is that a personal phone or? something that you have on your phone is that safe? that feature uh, if you configure the slack channel on your phone definitely you will get that there as well and okay. uh, apart from that uh, if you want to receive as a text message you can configure the pager duty as well okay pager duty is a third party paid tool where you can set up those settings okay thank you yeah yeah So can we stop here? So tomorrow I want to show you like deployment process as part of this project explanation. Then uh, in this deployment, like uh, what uh, methods we can include, like uh, CI/CD pipeline, how CI/CD pipeline works basically. What are the stages in the CI/CD pipeline? And then what branching strategy we can use? I will explain in the details. Okay. And uh, monitoring tools like how we can monitor. Then uh, day to day day to day activities. These are the important one. Then we, I can I can show you some of the real time issues where you can explain this. Uh, if if someone ask in the entry panel like do you work on any real time issues? How we resolve that? Okay. So these are the some samples I just collected here. 